Welcome everyone, this is Commissar Rycor, and this is a painting little video of a Commissar. I uh, got this one in a box set, I think, or no, I got it in its own pack. Well, anyways, so as we go through, I will uh, point out what colors I used, and I'll try to keep up with the video because I'm not really big on voiceovers. But here for the first part, uh, we did a, a uh, we did a, um, a primer with some Citadel White Skull Primer, or the whatever the white primer is they have now, and we're using some... Uh, Zarius purple as a as our base for our pants Because I figured I needed this uh, he was very royal and very regal So I wanted this guy to be have some purple on him originally I was gonna do most the entire model in purple But I realized there's so many different layers to the model He actually started to take on a completely different form with various different colors Anyway, so uh, so use the I use the Citadel purple mostly just because uh, most of my paints are Vallejo game paint but I didn't have a um, a game purple and getting Vallejo paints requires a mail order, but there's a games workshop. Well, there's a hobby store that sells games workshop paint not too far from here. And this, the new Citadel paints aren't actually that bad. They, I still prefer Vallejo for my core colors though, because I just kind of, it's got a more of a, an army or darker tone. So went well, with the purple there. And this was actually recorded off of a stream I did on Twitch, so there might be a little bit of a what looks like me talking, and that would be because I was on Twitch trying to do this stream on Twitch, and even even through partway through the video, you'll see this little thing pop in the left corner because it was like a stream, a music stream. Anyways, for the boots though, I'm using a what is that? It's a heavy. It's a Vallejo game color heavy brown. If I remember correctly, yes, that's a heavy brown. I don't know even why I have that color there. So basically, for almost all of my leather stuff in my guard army, I use Vallejo heavy brown as my base coat for um, for any leather bits, belts, boots, things like that. And uh, yep, so we're just doing up the boots real quick and getting the cape on. You just gotta, you know, you you will make a mistake. You might want to paint the the back of the cloak uh, before you or the coat before you paint the boots, but it's not that big a deal. And uh, but this, I definitely love this Vallejo um, heavy brown. It goes on very well. Here we are finishing up the boot, and I like to use my hands as a uh, little little palette to kind of smooth the paint out a little bit. And you can kind of feel when the paint is just the right consistency where you want to use it. And it just takes a lot of practice. You kind of figure it out what uh what you know what kind of consistency of paint you want especially for a base coat i'm not too concerned about ultra thinness on a base coat but i do not i definitely put several drops of water what you don't see on the left is uh, i got several cups of water on the left actually i think i got a cup of water on the right here but normally i keep them off to the left um it's just filming myself painting is actually a little more difficult than i thought it was going to be Looking good. Our bed music, which is what I've heard it called. Our bed music is from purple, purpleplanet.com. Uh, and now there's a, a link because it's for copyright things. They said I can use the music for royalty free as long as I include a link. And the song is called Hardcore. And I basically just picked it because it sounded okay. All right, so now we're moving on to uh, Vallejo Game Color Heavy Skin Tone. I tend to do this with all of my uh, models. I have a full range of skin tone colors, I think. I've got dwarf skin, yeah. Because what you would do, see this model only has one layer, one level of highlights. I theoretically should have done more levels of highlights, but it, it, can't, it turned out fine, so I didn't really necessarily need to. But I'm kind of trying to match some of the colors to match that, um, that junior officer right there, who unfortunately broke his arm. Not sure how that happens. Actually, it kind of looked like he burned it. So you're getting that, uh, that good heavy skin tone and all in that hands, you know. Get it in the crevice first, don't worry about messing up, you know, happy little mistakes. I think I did splotch it on the hat, on the hat a little bit, which is, it's really hard to paint when you have a camera there. And so this is kind of me trying to like, on the vlog, trying to decide where I'm actually gonna, you know, what I'm gonna paint next and what colors I'm gonna use next. So moving on. I have another one of these commissars that has the bolt pistol instead of the plasma gun, and I plan to inverse the colors from what I used here. So we're doing the same thing, and this time we're using a Citadel 
base Mephiston Red. Now there's a new red that they use instead of Mephiston Red um, for the base, but the basically Mephiston Red and whatever replaced it, they're a really good red. I prefer using this red, honestly, over some of the Vallejo Reds, because this has got more of a very, a very bright game color red, uh, which is one thing that Citadel is very good. I really love their reds. Um, I do have other Vallejo reds I've used before, you know, with heavy red and glory red, and then I got a what is this one? This is Vermilion, which is a, not a game color. That's just a model color because Vallejo has several different lines. But here I'm using the Citadel red, and it, it goes on really smoothly. I definitely like the way the red works, and uh, get that nice consistency. You know, get up on that that cloak. I apologize for the model moving around. Mostly just. It, even if I I originally had like you might see there's a trace of what looked like something on the on the table there I had a little traced out box of where the camera was aiming um, a couple of weeks ago and like a little taped out box of where I should keep the model I'm gonna have to figure out a different way to do this because it's just more of a pain But yep, here we are getting all those nice crevices and this is kind of like this part of any painting of any guardsman or any model for that matter more so more so guardsman than anything is kind of annoying because you it looks really flat the model doesn't have a lot of depth to it and uh, but we're definitely gonna bring that depth out later it's just this whole first initial part is what what takes the longest and it kind of looks you know and like we clearly we, we made a little mistake right there we got a little paint where we didn't need to but that's completely fine so we got paint on that on those boots trying to get that the back of the cloak so you know, be careful, but mistakes are mistakes. That's why we have the cleanup stage. We do the base coat stage first, then we do the cleanup, then we do the shading, then we do the highlighting. And that's pretty much how I always approach every model I do. And some some models are easier to paint than others, which is why I try to... Um, with Guardsmen, it's hard because you want to assemble them all. But I, when I'm assembling them, I try to make it to where it's easier to get the whole model, or at least most of it. Let's see, what color we move on to next? Ah, yes, yes. Next we moved on to uh, Vallejo Game Color Shadow Gray, which is actually was like the basis idea of my army. I wanted them to have gray, gray, gray jackets. Um... So, yep. Yeah. And this this gray, smooth. Very smooth. And unlike Citadel, which they, they've they had so many different paint lines recently. This is another reason why I went with Vallejo. It's because I knew that this army was going to take me years to paint. And um, at least two years, if not longer, to paint since I started it a long time. Uh, I started it almost two years ago. So, yeah. It's, it's taken a long time for me to actually get down to painting these models. But I knew that a lot of the Vallejo colors stay the same. But the Citadel colors change almost every year to every two years, so I was worried about what colors I was using. Now this is where we move on to a heavy blue, and we're gonna do some trim work and uh, some trim work in heavy blue. Basically, you're gonna get that sash. I forget what that sash is actually called. It's a little sash across his belt. I think you get that once you become a commissar, or maybe when you become a certain type of commissar. Thanks, phone. You're ruining my recording. Awesome. Yep, get all in that, all in that sash. Nice. Uh, you can get Vallejo paints online. Um, I get most of my Vallejo paints um, from the War Store, and I'm not sponsored by the War Store, by the way. But War Store, I get them from. I get most of my Vallejo paints from there. Um, I did get some of these in Korea because there is a really nice uh, Vallejo. Uh, there's a nice model uh, in the mall in Seoul. There's a nice little model area, and they sell game color there. They're a little bit more expensive than getting them from War Store. There's also there's tons of other places you can get Vallejo paints from, but I think a long, long, long time ago, I had a whole 72 kit. Um, but this time, I I very specifically made a chart about what um, what paints I needed, and it was basically 20 something colors. I had most of them just sitting on my desk over here. Just kind of using them as reference while looking at the thing. But uh, I go through quite a few colors every time I paint a single guardsman. 
Because uh, I feel like guardsmen are, they need color, you know. I, I, I ne I'm never one person to, like, discount someone's army if they're only using three colors. But these models, I feel like these guardsmen definitely shine when you use a lot more different colors. Commissars especially. A lot of them are red, or a lot of them are black, I, I mean. And one of the things is, is I've never found a, a black paint that I actually liked. Um... Even the black I use in this model, because they do use a little bit of black, I really don't like it. Let's see, what color are we moving on to next? I think we're just, uh... Nope, yeah, we're still fixing with the with the heavy blue. Trying to get... There's a lot of little blue accents on this model. Especially on the, the belt for his cloak, for his great coat. I just wonder if... If you're in a tropical environment... I, I haven't seen a commissar without a great coat on. Which is interesting. I'm curious. And it looks like this great coat has like a hole in the back. Someone commented that uh Oh yeah, right there under the under that arm is a giant pain in the ass to paint. Cause even even looking at the finished model, it's I could, there's still some spots that were kinda hard to get in there. But you know, you just try your best. Boom. A lot of, lot of little line detail work going on right here. But, uh, you know, try to do as much work as you can in this stage so you don't have to go back and clean it up. And this is when we do, we start doing the edging and we start picking out little things, especially on the, on the sides of the coat, where I'm like, oh man, I want to get these. And here I'm like talking, trying to decide where I want to paint. Giving the model a once over. Or maybe a twice over. <sighs> yeah, that thing at the top left, that is a... Uh, it's a little... For, a, for, for Twitch in OBS, which is what I use to record most of my videos, uh, you can add in little things. Because there's a, on, I think it's SoundCloud? Or Spotify. And Spotify, they have a Twitch playlist where you can play whatever music you want over Twitch while you're, where you're streaming. And it's fine. So here we're going to use this, uh, this green. And we're going to pick out those furly colors. Um, the frills on the end of the cloak with green. And it was, I was trying to debate whether or not I wanted to use more of a, like, a golder color. Because you would think that those would kind of be a gold. Uh, but I didn't want them to be gold. And I didn't want them to be yellow. Mostly just because of the yellow paints that I do have, a lot of them are crap. I do have some oranges, though. That, now that I think about it, I could have used some of these oranges. I don't even know why I bought these oranges. I'm really curious now. Why did I buy these oranges? I should use these. No, that's a red rust. That's a dry color. What have I had? Do I have an orange foundation somewhere? Huh. I know I got something. Hmm. Maybe. I do like those oranges, though. Now we're basically just comparing the greens, because this green, this is a Vallejo heavy green. That's what I'm using. And it's the same green that's on the armor. Um, so basically trying to keep the greens very similar matching. Regimental green as being the main primary color. Just picking out a few. Trying to get, trying to get like a lot of paint where you want it to be, but not putting too much. It's always the struggle. What you got going on here? Ah, now we're switching to a brown. Ah, yes. Okay, so this is a game color. Um, Vallejo Heavy Sienna. I use Heavy Sienna for basing anything that's going to be bronze or gold. 
So anything that I plan on being bronze or gold, I base it with heavy sienna, which is kind of like a, as you can see, it's like a, it's like a weird terracotta brown almost. It's like a very muted brown, but it's perfect for, uh, for putting down a layer. It's perfect for gold to adhere to. Gold sticks to this very well. So I definitely recommend using a brown of a similar kind. Uh, Citadel's got plenty of different browns uh, that you could use, but I definitely recommend using a brown base for gold. And if you're using like, um, I don't do non-metal metallic styles. It's just not something I do. Um, maybe at some point in the future, I might I might you know figure out how to do those a little bit better. I've tried them I've tried them a few times, but. Never, never to any great success, but, you know, if you get lucky, you get lucky. But basically getting all those, all the parts that can be gold, especially on the tip of the plasma pistol. My plan for next time is anything that's silver on this model is going to be gold on the next model. To include the sword, which I think is going to be awesome, so the sword's going to be gold. And, but the, uh, we're using a, the other model's got a bolt pistol, so it's going to be... A gold bolt pistol instead of a silver bolt pistol and it's gonna have it's it's I'm doing it not not so much to stick with the canon of what the colors would be realistically but more just because hey this is one commissar and this is another and I wanted to inverse the color schemes and now this is where I go through and I uh, I fix up some stuff I noticed that there was um, up by his neck collar was supposed to be the same color as his coat and I missed that, so I had to go back and kind of get that in there. But I did, I did end up getting his face with that uh, shadow brown, or shadow gray color. What color are we using here? Ah, so here's, here's where we're returning with the blue. And this is when we uh, fix up the sash, and then we start picking out the side lines for the coat. Yes, so this is where we start lining in the coat with that blue. Could have done that earlier, but... I didn't notice it until right about now. And we basically look for anything on the model that, you know, could stand out and could use some blue. And this is like the inverse of the red bloodline on a, on a normal US Marine, where they have that, um, I think they call it the blood stripe, or the blood strip down their pants. Like, I'm not exactly sure what they call it, but it's something along those lines. But this I use blue instead of red. Because the cloak was red. I'm basically just picking out everything that I want blue to be. Just turn, you know, models coming along, but this is over the course of several days, so just beware that a model of this kind of detail is going to take you, unless you, unless you can spend your entire day. Oh, so this color, I love this color. This is a game color heavy charcoal, and heavy charcoal. Fabulous color. I use it for las guns. Anywhere that you would think about using black, I mostly use heavy charcoal. And it's smooth. It doesn't look as... See, the weird thing about all the blacks that I've seen, that until you ink the blacks, until you shade the blacks, they look extremely bright and extremely vibrant. And they're very, very distracting. See, even when you're just painting, the blacks are very distracting. Um, Oddly enough, the blacks aren't as distracting when you're, um, when you spray something with black, it's not that crazy, but when you paint it with black, whether it's Citadel black or, or even Vallejo black, it just looks too bright. And I mean, maybe like, I don't know if bright's not the word, but too glossy. Even when they're flat blacks, they still look a little too glossy, but I love this, this heavy charcoal. And so I like to get all the, um various areas because even in like even in real military a lot of stuff is gray so the heavy charcoal definitely throws that gray in there and here we're about to use the we're about to do everything with a base coat of uh, I think I used lead belcher yes I used lead belcher which is one of the newer colors it replaced the old gunmetal color which, if you're using Vallejo, gunmetal works just fine. But for some weird reason, when I went to buy gunmetal at the time, they didn't have any gunmetal, and they only and so I had to get Citadel paint. So I had to get lead belcher, which I actually like the consistency of lead belcher. 
um, and the gunmetal and the original Citadel gunmetal. It, it works perfectly fine. Now, I always use a completely different pot when I'm using my metallics. And I use one pot for gold metallics and one pot for, I'm talking about water pots, and one pot for um, silver metallics because if you kind of, if you mix them together and you don't let them dry, you're going to get this weird, you're going to get metallic paints in with your non-metallic paints, so it's, it kind of sucks. You know, picking out those skulls, getting that nice shiny, shiny color on those skulls. Now I thought about this, and I could have done the chain a little less shiny, maybe done the chain in a bronze. Or, or added some rust to the chain. But at the same time, he's a commissar. He's already looking flashy. He's looking pretty clean, takes care of his kit. So I figured having a shiny ass blingy chain works perfectly fine. And I'm also kind of curious as to why he even has that chain. Let me look at this model a little closer. So the chain connects to his pistol, to his the front of his jacket. But it doesn't, there's, he doesn't have a holster for this pistol, which I guess he's just expected to carry it or, or let it hang from the front of his jacket. That's weird. This model's odd. Looks cool though. I think we're pretty much getting everything, everything that we want to base gunmetal. Now gunmetal works very well on a black background but we just put it on a white background here. It goes on it goes on just as fine. It's just you sort of notice parts where you like if you if you miss with black, you can easily see where the black is. But when you miss with white, you're like is that oh yeah, oh that's supposed to be white. So And I do apologize for like the out of focus kind of blurriness of the picture. It is really hard to to paint a model that this that's like this while your camera is actually literally between your arms uh, I did edit out two parts in this where the camera fell um, for like one fell completely on the ground and the other one just kind of fell backwards yep yeah, yep yeah, and we're doing all those hoses now I've, in, in a lot of my models I actually do those black those kind of hoses, those kind of uh, electrical tubes. Uh, I do those black, but for some weird reason I did these in gold or in silver. And I can't know, I'm not exactly sure why I did those in silver instead of black. They should have been black, but I'm not gonna change it. Cause it actually looks, it looks pretty fine. But trying to have a unified theory across your, a unified paint scheme across your army over the course of painting has really become an issue for me where I'll paint a squad or, or, or a couple models one color and then I'll want to use a completely different color. So the way I get around that is I picked a color that was both very difficult to paint, a scheme that was multicolored and difficult enough for me to paint on my other models. Not this one, this one's completely just me messing around with different colors. Because he's a commissar and I could I feel like I could take some liberty. This is where I, I, I this was kind of a mistake choosing this color. Well, not necessarily a mistake uh, because of what I did later on. I thought I made a mistake with this color because this was the green that was going to be on the plasma pistol and I thought I chose the wrong green. Oh, and this is also for that stupid little, there's a little, little chest metal and I could have referenced pictures to see what colors it actually was supposed to be, but I just went with green uh, and black and green on the little chest metal right there. So this is where I use Chaos Black, and I only use Chaos Black on the chest metal right here, and I still hate using it. This this paint color, no matter how many times they re-release the black on Citadel, uh, it still sucks to work with. You make one tiny mistake with that black, and it, it's going everywhere. So. But we managed to keep our hands steady enough which honestly would have been a lot easier without the without the camera. So we're using that log flesh. I think it was that. It's a 
Yeah. Wog flesh base coat on the plasma pistol. Now, I, I thought I should have used heavy brown, but it kind of worked out in the end because the Citadel colors range up a little bit better when you're using Citadel highlights. So use the fact that you use wog flesh there, perfectly fine. Not re no reason for me. You could use wog flesh instead of uh, a heavy brown on Vallejo, but I still think the heavy brown has a little bit more of a foresty brown to it, a little bit more darker, kind of a bluish, uh, a darker green. And so this is me going through and um, adding, oh yeah, this is me adding a little dark sienna to the top of that metal. Because there's a little pin clip where the metal clips onto the uniform, so I was like, oh, I got a little dark sienna. And then I clean up a little bit more areas um, that I got with the silver. Put a little bit more of that, uh, or the heavy sienna, not dark sienna. Get a little more of that heavy sienna in there. Clean up those. Now this is the point where the model is coming together You've got almost every area, if not every area, completely covered. And you're like, yeah, this is looking good. This is this is like this is where I want it to be. Now this is where you do your you do your cleaning. So you've done all your base coats, you put everything down, but you want to clean up the mistakes because obviously, especially on a model like this, it's very hard for especially for me, I mean, maybe if you're a, a higher class painter, you make a lot less mistakes, or maybe if you're just really used to the model, you make a lot less mistakes. But for me, I still make mistakes. And I used to get so frustrated. Well, now I just go through, go back over with the colors, fix them up, just like uh, Bob Ross used to do. Those aren't mistakes. Those are those are pretty little flat. Or what is it? He used to say those are uh, those are birds. Those are pretty birds. So and we're going through. And we're just we're just hitting up everything that uh, you know either either doesn't look right because we used about one one thin layer of paint on it on the entire model um, of various thinnesses, but if it looks weird, then we just add another layer and we just clean it up. But we try not to be thick. We try to be thin with our layers and use very little paint. Unfortunately, sometimes, especially with the especially with the eyedropper bottle uh, paint bottles, we'll waste a little bit more paint, but just you know. Don't feel bad if you waste paint accidentally. It happens every once in a while. Now we're cleaning up that purple. Basically just going over everything. Every every trying to trying to look at the entire model and pick out areas where we think we messed up. Yeah, just picking out all those little details. Give them, giving the model a once over. Don't even remember why I put red there, because the red looked fine. Hmm. And maybe there was some blue coming through. Oh yeah, there was a little bit of weird blue. Uh, some like weird lined blue going on, and it it was it wasn't as smooth as I thought it should have been. Yeah, definitely right there on that cloak. I put a little bit too much blue when I did the first layer, but uh, hitting up with some red. That red, ah. Oh, I just love that fist on red. It's so good. You know, just, just popping out a little bit of extra layer, a little bit of more vibrancy on those uh, on that base coat. And yeah, just just you can see the hand. It gets kind of weird after a while. Just let just you know, one thing you got to worry about is even if you're switching colors real quickly, just pick a different spot on your hand. And after a while, you might want to just go wipe it off uh, with a paper towel or whatever. Oh, I dropped it. No. What are we doing now? Oh, yes, yes. Fixing up the face cuz I got a lot of uh, that shadow gray on that on that side of the face. Just trying to fix up the face a little bit. Now, I, I do admit that the the paint I was using, the heavy skin tone Vallejo, I overwatered it. And I was very worried, and you can't see it so much on the camera, but that that 
that left side of his face where it gets close to the side of the coat, I really thought it was going to leak. And um, so I was like, oh, crap. Luckily, it dried just fine. And it, we didn't have a lot of issues. Getting over here some more heavy blue. Um, yep, heavy blue. Yeah, just picking out. Um, there was a part right there. I got. I think. I think I see it now. Yeah, it's right there. I completely missed uh, the inner side next to that chain. And trying to get that is was a pain, but I did end up getting it, and I got some on the chain. So I had to redo the chain with metal afterwards. Now, as far as like changing out my water. For non-metallic colors, I generally use the same water the entire time. But well, here we got our Agrax Agra Earth Shade and our Nuln Oil. And um, here's where I here's where my concern was. I use a lot of colors, and most of the time you want to use Agra, Agra Earth Shade on non uh, on colors that you know, uh, like the those silvers. But you want to use Nuln Oil on like black stuff, things you want to make darker. Um, and there are other washes you could use, but I tend to just mostly just use these two washes. And I just go straight from the pot. I don't thin them down at all. Um, sometimes I go really thick with them and just slap them on, especially on Guardsmen, because uh, Guardsmen are really gritty and dirty. But other times I, just, I, I do go a little thinner, sort of, um, where I go straight from the pot, but I don't, you don't glob it on there in huge pools. I, I kind of spread it around. Well, here I tried to avoid the metallic parts so much. I tried to get everything that wasn't the well, this wasn't metallic so much with the Agrax Earthshade. Agrax, Grax Earthshade. Yeah, it's kind of kind of hard to say really really fast. But uh, oh yeah, get that that red. Oh. Now I know you could have used um, what was the? Do I have that the red shade? What's that called? Um, yeah yeah, I got the red shade actually. I could have used that one. It's called a uh, Caroberg Crimson, and that probably let me look at this. Probably would have came out really well. But then this is one of oh yeah, that shade looks. Oh, that's more of a purple. I might use that on the purple. Part. But uh, yeah, this is when you use the Nuln Oil on the metallic parts, and it really pops all metallics. Now, if you were to look at this model a little closely, you'd see on the glove there's some other accent areas where I could have went gold. Uh, could have mixed gold and silver together. I just went straight silver. Plus there's there's some other exposed areas where I could have really detailed out the wrist because there's it, what it looks like. You could put some wires right near that uh, grip. But I I went with this with a little bit more basic, and I definitely like how it turned out. And uh, now we're gonna skip on to I believe this next cut. Yes. So this is the next day. Um, I completely let it dry and now we're gonna go in and we're gonna do our highlights. The model looks beautiful as is already But we're not done and now we're gonna we're starting pretty much with the Metallics now what I went with is you take your base coat thin it down pretty thin um, Try to add more water. So this is lead belcher and On the palette I put some lead belcher down My palette is so covered in paint I just use a plastic plate for my palette. It's all I've ever used. And I try to paint it on here to get a different color or a little different surface. It didn't really work and this ended up knocking over my camera. So I ended up, I only do it here for a little bit, but it acts, it does help a little bit trying to get some of those intricate details. Plus it, it'll sort of, cause the way I highlight is I mostly only highlight the top of the model and some some parts of the lower part, but it was helping you know kind of figure out where the light was hitting, and it's you kind of really just want to add the highlights to the top. You don't want to you don't want to highlight the underside so much if you can avoid it. And this is when we start uh, adding in other colors. So we're, we, what I do is I mix the colors together. So I start with chain I start with lead belcher and now I'm using game colored chainmail silver. And I actually just add a drop to the paint, to the lead belcher that's already on the palette. So, the, and then I mix the two colors together, add some more water, make it really thin. And then I just highlight less and less. I just put a little bit more up towards the tip. Um, now, if the paint's really, really thin, you could do the entire thing, but just, just try to stroke the brush up towards the top. Hint, he says stroke. And 
And then this is where I kind of just pick out little spots where I think the highlight should be. And depending on uh, how gritty you want your Guardsmen to look, you don't necessarily have to go this bright. Um, you know, in the 41st millennium, it's not all shiny, but I figured, you know, really, really, really shimmery, uh, bright metallics on a Commissar kind of worked. And the last color that we added for the highlight is silver. Uh, it's game color silver from Blaham. And we just add that to the other two colors. You can do a final, final highlight with just silver by itself, but I didn't do that. I just went with, I just mixed the, all three of the metallics together, adding, you know, going up in uh, brightness, so to speak, in more of a lighter shade. And uh, yep, just, just adding just a little bit of the silver all the way through, and it definitely, definitely allows it to pop in certain spots. And um, yeah, and just getting that little front of that chest. And very, very little paint. Almost kind of a quasi, you know, like, like a dry brush without, you know, crazy uh, harshing on the bristles. And then, you know, take a look at it. You're like, all right, all right, silver should go here. Now, I could have done a, a, a last silo of silver, but I, I switched on to the gold. Now, with gold, I do gold two, one of two ways. Well, gold I do this way. Bronze I do another way. So with gold, I start with um, uh, bright... Bright bronze. The three game colors I use are bright bronze, glorious gold, and polished gold. So right now we're about to pick out all the gold parts with bright bronze. Whenever I pick up the metal. <sighs> yep. There we go. Took me a while to get my palette situated. Now, I didn't like the way that it pooled on the vents on the side of, on the side of the plasma pistol. It did. Um, it did dry perfectly fine. I just didn't like the way it was pooling in there, so I just kind of backed off. Um, I love how the handle on the sword turned out. It turned out very well. Um, now, what you can do after you do gold, you could do another shade of Agrax Earth Shade, or there's a, a Sienna wash, I forget what it's called. Um, it used to be called like Ogren's Flesh, and there was another, uh, there's another uh, shade you could use with gold that works very well with gold. Because um, the Agrax Earth Shade works very well with tan, fleshier tones, but there's another one that will pull the red out of the gold. Because gold, you might not know, but it, it does have a little bit of red tint once you pulled certain washes on, on you layer certain washes on top of gold. So, but I, I didn't do any washes after I layered the gold. I've done that before, but uh, we get onto glorious gold. Like if I was doing more of a muted gold, like um, on, I don't know, a sergeant or something, or because every once in a while I have a regular guardsman get a hold of some sort of gold weapon. Um, then I would do more of a muted gold. <clears throat> but this is where we're just, we're just adding up that, uh, the glorious gold. Now for a long time, I thought glorious gold looked brighter than polished gold, but then I, I looked at it a little longer and it, it actually, polished gold is actually way brighter than glorious gold. So, but I do, uh, and basically gold, you just kind of want to just, just hit a few areas, but you don't want to go cre too crazy. And, um. Uh, now with his chest, the gold pools inside the little uh, strap, uh, inside between the strips. But it wasn't that bad. And with the same through the metallics, I'm just adding one drop, water, using it, adding another drop right on top of that one, water, mixing it together. So I'm pretty much just mixing all three golds together, adding more, you know, cause the bottom layer will start to dry and then the layer you add on top, you know, it just kind of blends them together. Now I don't recommend blending the golds beforehand. I recommend blending them as you go, uh, because as you're using it, you'll you'll notice the golds blend better as you're using it than it would if you blended it beforehand. And then what is this? That was too fast. Um, 
Now that I think of it, there is some colors that I didn't highlight. Ah, okay, so this is the green. This is heavy green. This is me just picking out, um, doing some more highlights on the green. You know, I didn't do, I, I didn't add anything besides the, this green. This is as far as I went on this green. And, uh, we're going to use Wog Green. I think I might have used Wog Green. Or Wog Flesh from the Citadel Green. And then we go to, what is this? I think this is... Go next. Ah, yes. So we went with a Warp Stone Glow. And this is for the Plasma Pistol. Basically, we took the green that we were using before, mixed them together, and then basically just... Now, with Plasma Pistols, unlike what you would normally do typically with a top highlight, Plasma emanates light outward in all directions. I went with a, a little less OS, OLSD or OSD, Object Source, OSL, Object Source Lighting. Uh, moot Green is what I use for the final green. These used to be called Scorpion or Emerald Green, but I, uh, it's now called Moot Green. And it's, I don't, I honestly don't think it's as bright as it used to be. Well, this is where I add a little bit, I mix all the three colors together. And I get it in there and it's looking good, but then this is where I take just Moot Green by itself and I put it on a dry brush. Um, it's a little bit, it's got a little bit of water, but mostly it's just got kind of a dry brush. And this is a completely different brush. And this is where I kind of OS, uh, OSL it a little bit, where I just go with just that one single color, uh, which is brighter than the combination of the colors. And I just go sort of all around, but I'm not going too crazy because um, it's the plasma pistol. It's bright, but I didn't want to overshadow everything by just covering it OSL. And then we're taking some more of that base color purple. Now, this was my, this is where I was having trouble with this, with this part here. Um, I did thin the paint down quite a bit and I was concerned about, uh, I was trying to be careful with the hat, the, the hat. And this happens every once in a while, especially with cloth. So I eventually just painted the whole damn top. Um, but I used a really thin layer of purple and it still turned out well when it, when it completely dried. So it wasn't any issue there. Didn't cover up any problems. <clears throat> Getting those pantalones. Try not to highlight too much. Uh, I got the boot though, which I, way later, after I took a bunch of pictures and got ready to upload them, I noticed that I painted the boot by accident with some purple. So I did eventually fix that, and you'll see it in the, completely fixed in the end of the video. I uh, hit uh, some of that shadow gray. Adding some uh, some light shadow gray in there. Now I felt like I was using heavier paint than I should have on the shadow gray spot. I feel like I should have watered it down more. Uh, it did turn out fine, but I will water that down a little bit. Use a little lighter layer in the future for that color. Fixing the face up. Now the face, to me, honestly, I feel like the face turned out really well. Um, I only used one layer. I could have went all the way up to uh, dead white on the face because uh, a lot of commissars that I've seen, especially in pictures, are very gaunt and very pale and very stern and they're not tropical. They don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of tan. But I, I didn't only went with one layer of highlighting on this one. Then we hit up some Mephisto on red to do, uh, I love that red. I could have, I could have went up higher into higher color, brighter reds but I just really love that red. And now that I think about it, I should have done, I could have done some Blood for the Blood God technical paint on the sword. That would have been, ooh. I might do that on the next Commissar that I do. I could always do it on this one. I could add some on there now. Uh, I don't know. I'll have, to, I'll have to figure out how that actually works. Um, I don't know, because Blood for the Blood God, it's a real interesting technical paint. Um, I might have to look at some videos to see if I want to add that to this model. I don't necessarily want to go that way. Maybe with the next commissar. Yeah, probably with the next commissar. Or maybe with a, um, a chainsaw wielding uh, uh, sergeant, one of my platoon squads. Maybe I'll have him, like, taking on something. 
Yep, just just trying to clean up and um, you know just hit up as much of that nice that nice red as I can. Um, just kind of picking out spots. You know, I want to see, you want to see this commissar from a long ways off. I want to make sure you got your uh, imperial primer with you. Make sure you didn't leave it losing your paperwork. Make sure you didn't lose your gun. Have your magazine with you. Make sure you got all your stuff. Cause he will, uh, he will use. Oh, also, uh, oh yeah, I got some heavy blue. Fixing up that blue area. Trying to highlight a little bit of blue. And the problem, you gotta be really careful. Now I'm actually using a normal, a normal brush. I'm not using a, a fine detail brush. And I found that the super fine detail brushes are good in very, very limited circumstances. But this is a size two brush. And this is pretty much uh, what it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is me doing the base of the model. And I was going to add some sand to it, uh, but I already started to paint it, and at that point I was like, ah, screw it, whatever. I'm not going to put any sand on this base. I might sand the next base. I might not. I don't know. But uh, I did not end up putting any sand on this base. And uh, to me, this is like a, a rock rate, kind of a concrete stone. Um... And I was very impatient with doing the basing. I had spent so much time on the model that to me the base was, now the base is one of those things where you can do it right really quickly or you can do it eh, not so much. Um, I did end up missing some uh, some shell casings on here. Oh, for, for almost all of my bases I use uh, Morn Fang Brown as my base and, my, and the color around it. Um, I just, uh, so basically the, 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 what is that color? Is that, yeah, what is that color? That is, uh, Mechanica Standard Gray, which is on the rock, uh, wasn't dry <laughs> when I started using the Mornfang Brown. So I tried some moving around and it sort of blended together, um, under the rock. Wasn't that bad. Um, I did end up washing this. So this is kind of where the video cuts out now. I washed it and this is what the model looks like when it's completely done. So as you can see right there, uh, those two shell casings, those should really be of a brass color. Um, I have seen shell casings that color in real life. So I just kind of was like, whatever. Um, I did wash the entire base with a uh, Agrax Earth Shade to get that kind of a uh, more brownish color. And then I went around the edge uh, again, with um, some of that Mordfang Brown, that Citadel Mordfang Brown, and the the Mechanica Standard Gray is also Citadel. I didn't highlight any of the base because I kind of felt like the model should take a bit. Now uh, the sword, the the metallics on this model, definitely. Um, I I like how they look. This these pictures are almost a little too close because you know if you help if you hold it. Um, away from you and you look at it from a distance around a tabletop it looks gorgeous now obviously the closer you get to the model you start to notice things um the, just a little graininess because a lot of my models i'll build them prime them and they kind of sit for a while they get a little dusty i do try to dust them off but in the end they get a little bit of a weird color but this is how it turns out i hope you guys liked it and uh you know let me know and subscribe if uh, you really enjoyed these but uh thanks for watching and hope you guys have a great day Bye.